While the Dallas Cowboys off-season conversations have centered on pass rushers, tight ends, and a certain safety from Seattle, we can't forget about special teams. Dallas must make at least one move to carry last year's group into 2019, and they may want to consider upgrades at least one other spot. It's already been reported that the team want to bring back longtime long snapper LP. Laduser, who has an expiring contract. Laduser has been with the club since 2005, putting him just a year shy of the returning Jason Witten in total seasons with the Cowboys. According to multiple sources, the Cowboys will decline the option on W.R. Terrence Williams' contract creating $2.5 million in savings. Also, a source tells at The Athletic DFW the team plans on re-signing deep snapper LP Laduser for a 15th season. Though he turns 38 in a few weeks, Laduser has given no reason to think that his perennial perfection is at risk. He's never been credited with a bad snap in his 14 seasons. That performance record has kept him as one of the highest paid long snappers in the NFL for some time, and that will likely also continue if he's resigned. However, that should cost them team a little over $1 million. Keeping Laduser around could be very important, providing stability and no excuses, as the Cowboys decide what do at kicker. Despite some of his highlight moments in 2018, Brett Maher may not be what they're looking for long-term. Dallas Cowboys K. Brett Maher It's easy to get distracted by his two special teams Players of the Week awards and breaking the franchise record for longest field goal. Maher was glamorous at times, but his full body of work wasn't even average compared to his place kicking peers. As I wrote about a few weeks ago, Brett's 80.6% was ranked 25th among NFL kickers in 2018 for total accuracy. He only hit 75% of his kicks between 30 to 39 yards and 64% from 40 to 49 yards, though one of those was blocked. Mars proficiency from a long distance, and his ability to hit from ranges most kickers can't, is intriguing. Those kicks are still worth just three points, just like all the ones he missed. The Cowboys may decide that they prefer efficiency to flash. That's not to say Brett doesn't deserve a chance to compete. He does, and his minimal salary makes it easy to keep him for that purpose. But there could be several top kickers on the market this offseason, who can hit from the 50s just as well as the closer ranges, and Dallas would be wise to look at them. This is also a year when using a late-round draft pick on a kicker might be a good idea. Special teams is where you can wait until day three and still potentially snag the best kicker coming out of college. Unlike kicker and long snapper, don't expect any moves at punter. Chris Jones still has three years left on his contract and is one of the best at directional punting and ball placement. Nobody has ever returned one of Jones' punts for a touchdown in the regular season. These specialists may only account for about 14% of the team's total snaps in a season, but those plays have decided plenty of games. They still present the Cowboys with some big decision to make in this 2019 offseason. 2019 offseason kicker long snapper punter Matthew Emmons USA Today Sports The NFL announced yesterday that the salary cap for the 2019 season will be set at $188.2 million. That's $11 million more than last year, and the extra cash is welcome for the Dallas Cowboys as they have several expensive goals this offseason. While the increase is good news, it's not surprising. The cap has gone up at least $10 million each of the last several years, and this is about the amount that all teams expected for this season. The NFL and the NFLPA have set the 2019 salary cap at $188.2 million per team. That's up from $177.2 million last year and the sixth year in a row that it's gone up by at least $10 million. This is where they anticipate it being. 
So, while this news it doesn't change anything about all of the projections and previews you've been reading up until now, it does at least solidify what all 32 NFL teams will have to work in 2019. And of course, the number could have potentially come in lower than expected. Even with around $50 million in cap space this year, the Cowboys won't be struggling for ways to spend that money. Their top off-season priority, re-signing to Demarcus Lawrence, could cost them well over a third of that cap room. Then there are discussions about a new contract for other pro bowlers like QB Dak Prescott, RB Ezekiel Elliott, and CB Byron Jones. Dallas will also be hoping to improve areas of the team to build on last year's playoff appearance. Signing any marquee free agent, such as the much-discussed Earl Thomas, will command a good bit of that spending power. But now we know for sure what the Cowboys have to spend. Free agency soon begins on March 13th, and it appears that Dallas will have all the freedom to be major players in the open market if they so choose. In a move that comes as little surprise, Dallas Cowboys defensive lineman David Irving has received an indefinite suspension by the league for another violation of the substance abuse policy. This will certainly hurt Irvin in his impending 2019 free agency. Irving's suspension comes just a week after the Cowboys had reportedly dropped the talented, but troubled, player from their future plans. This news may help explain why. David Irving of the Dallas Cowboys has been suspended indefinitely for violating the policy and program for substances of abuse, per the NFL. Earlier this week, the league also gave D. Randy Gregory an indefinite suspension for his own issues with drug use. However, Gregory is still under contact with Dallas next year. David Irving recently defended his value as a player, stating that his play on the field spoke for itself. And it's true, the man gets to the quarterback about as well as any interior lineman in football. But that doesn't do teams any good when you're suspended, or when you're missing time for other personal issues. And Irving, who only managed to play in two games last year for the Cowboys, is currently more trouble than he's worth. We'll see if another team is willing to work with him down the road. But this just solidifies what we already expected, it won't be the Dallas Cowboys. Just yesterday it was announced that Jason Witten is coming out of retirement and returning to the Dallas Cowboys in 2019. This stunning development certainly changes the landscape for the tight end position, but it doesn't mean the Cowboys won't make any moves during the offseason. Before Thursday, many felt that Dallas would make improving at Tay one of their top offseason priorities. Their second-round pick in the 2019 draft, which is highest one that the Cowboys have this year, has been seeing a lot of tight ends in mock drafts. There's also been a lot of talk of veteran free agents like Jared Cook or Tyler Eifert heading to Dallas. Other than the newly resurrected Witten, the Cowboys have Blake Jarwin, Dalton Schultz, and Rico Gathers under contract next season. Last year's starter, Jeff Swaim, is an unrestricted free agent. Some have rushed to the assumption that Jason's return settles things at Tay for 2019. Gives you the veteran mentor and at least two young prospects in Jarwin and Schultz, with Gather's likelihood to return next year still hard to project. But Jason Witten's name is far greater than the last few years of production, and now he's been away from the game for a year. Can Dallas really count on him to improve things from last year? Bigger question, should the Cowboys really be out of the Tay market this offseason? Dallas Cowboys Tay Jason Witten The team's intention for further offseason business may be seen in the modest contract that Jason signed to come back. According to reports, Witten is only going to cost $3.5 million in 2019. That doesn't prohibit the Cowboys from adding other talent. It actually may set them up perfectly for adding someone like Tyler Eifert, a former first-round pick who's been battling health issues for three seasons. Getting Witten back helps mitigate the risk on Eifert. Plus, Jason appears ready to accept the lesser role than what he's had in the past. Cowboys source says Jason Witten will play somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 snaps per game, and will share time with the young TEs on the roster, so as to not stunt their growth. 
to put that in perspective, the Cowboys had about 67 offensive snaps in each game last year. If Witten truly plays around just 25, that would clearly make him rotation player. Do you want those other 40 to 45 snaps going to the likes of Jarwin and Schultz, or do you want some more upside? There's a bit of hype around Blake Jarwin coming off his December play and especially the huge game in the team's regular season finale. He posted a whopping 117 yards and three touchdowns against the New York Giants. That final month was the bulk of Jarwin's 2018 production, 20 catches for 220 yards in four games. Three scores in New York were his only touchdowns the entire year. However, in Dallas' two playoff games, Blake had just five catches for 32 yards total. How much of that is on Scott Linehan and Dak Prescott, and how much is on Jarwin? That's hard to answer. Texas Tech TJ Sternberger, 2019 draft prospect before yesterday's big news, with Jason Witten many were projecting a tate to the Cowboys with their 58th overall pick in the second round. Some will probably back off from that now, but that might be an overreaction. There's not enough evidence yet to suggest that Jarwin or Schultz can be the long-term starter. If Dallas doesn't want to go the route of adding a free agent like Eifert, drafting someone high to rotate with and learn from Witten still makes a lot of sense. One name that has been commonly mocked to the Cowboys for 2019 is Jay Sternberger out of Texas Tech. But it's a tay deep class by almost all analyses, so perhaps the Cowboys can afford to wait until a later round to get a player of consequence. The key point here is that the surprising return of Jason Witten doesn't mean the Cowboys are done at tight end this offseason. It gives them some security, but it doesn't solve the issues of trying to speed up the offense and get more big plays in the passing game. How much Dallas likes Blake Jarwin is arguably the biggest factor here even with Witten's presence. That will dictate how much action they have in the tight end market this offseason, whether it's in free agency or the draft.